Hello, my name is Mark Fennell from The Feed on SBS and on Triple J Radio, and I'm about to go back to school with Student Edge. Hi, I'm Simon Morado, and today I'm sitting down with Mark Fennell, host of The Feed. Hi. I feel like I'm about to regress into childhood. This is going to terrify. We're doing it. We're going all the way back. Oh, God. Make it stop. <laughs> Princess Mononoke, Akira and Ghost in the Shell have all raised the profile of anime in the West. But the wonders of... What kind of student were you? I was this weird mixture of very nervous and kind of um, a little bit too overconfident and precocious. I was a kid that learnt that I could talk a lot very early on. Of course, when you talk a lot very early on, you get told to shut up a lot. Uh, and so I think by the time I got to high school, I was just very, very, very nervous. Um, but underneath the surface, I was quite confident. And so basically, what I'm telling you is I'm an asshole. Like, I was an <laughs> asshole from yeah, day yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, did you feel like a bit like, oh, they keep telling me to be quiet, but yeah. I got such good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, because I think you, the sense that you have good stuff was beaten out of you by the time, by the time I got to high school. So um, from primary school to high school, I went to a an obnoxious, overpriced private boys' school that my parents, who weren't rich, my parents just assumed that that would give me the best education and they, they worked way too long hours um, to afford to put me in that school. Uh, and what they didn't realise and I didn't realise until much later was that it was awful. It was the worst thing in the world because it was one of those really... Uh, blokey private schools where if you're not a sports person or some kind of musical prodigy, there is no space for you. Um, whilst it was awful as a culture, it did have a lot of resources and it was my first experience with media. In fact, I think at, in year nine, I directed a Tropfest film. What then were the films that you kind of watched growing up that sort of made you think, okay, this is something I want to, a field I want to get into and start critiquing? It was a very defined moment. It was 1999. And I'd always liked movies, uh, and I'd, I'd always liked talking about movies and TV shows, but in 1999, I made a decision that I was going to watch all of the Oscar-nominated movies. And I don't know if you remember, but 1999 was a great year for That movies. was a good year. Yeah, it was like Magnolia, it was American Beauty, it was The Insider, it was so being many... Malkovich, yeah, being Malkovich, Sense. Yeah, which, it was so yeah. many good films, and so many good films in different genres, right? And they were big films, they were films that were accessible. I saw, I think it was The Insider, and I was just like... That's it. I'm going to do something with films. This is what I'm doing from here on in. Um, and I've never really had a career plan beyond being the film critic for Triple J. And it's actually been really interesting because I, I, that was all I wanted to be. That was everything. And then I got it and I was like, I don't really have a plan for what to do after the one film review I do a week. I didn't have a plan for what right. I did career-wise beyond that. So it's been a bit of a feeling my way through since that job and, and I even though I go to often I've done a bunch of TV shows um, Hungry Beast and The Circle and, and The Feed I've always maintained that one job because that that two minutes worth of radio that I make uh, every week for Triple J is kind of it's it's all of my love of film kind of poured into two minutes and I, and and if people keep asking me you know, why do you still do it I'm because I'm coming up on 10 years uh, and I will quit at some point, but I still love it. I still love being able to go, look into a microphone and go, oh my God, I just saw this thing and it's amazing, we need to talk about it. Because um, that takes me right back to being 14 years old, sitting in that cinema, and it was an empty cinema. That was the thing. I saw The Insider at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a Thursday, and I really looked around and went, we need to talk about this, right? We need to discuss this, there's no one there. And I remember, th I think that was the moment I was like, actually... I need to be somebody that does this. I need to have this conversation with people all the time. I do love the idea of the 14-year-old Michael yeah. Mann fanatic going, guys, <laughs> it's you not know like... Grednall, but have you seen Manhunter? Um, yeah. <laughs> well, there's not that many 14-year-old Michael Mann fans. <laughs> exactly. And if there are, call me. We should be friends. <laughs> uh, but I think what you kind of alluded to is that you've been adaptable, right? So mm. you have hosted you know, The Feed, mm. et cetera, and, and you've written a book and while still doing Triple J. But when you're doing uni course selection, mm. it's hard to, to plot out that plan. So can you tell me a little bit about, what, what was there a point when you thought, you know what, maybe this isn't a viable career, media journalism or <laughs> film criticism, and, and here are my backup plans? Or were you, did, were you vision board style just devoting yourself, inspired by The Secret perhaps, to, to get that <laughs> one gig? So that's, a, that's an interesting question because what happened was I got to the end of school and I had this... I, I completely screwed up my, my university preferences. 
Um, I'd done slightly better than I'd, than I'd expected. I kind of, I'd been through all of high school being told that I was very average, very average, very average, and the bell curve was just super nice to me that year, and suddenly I wasn't very average. I was like, oh, I did well. But I put in all these university preferences to go study in places I didn't really want to go study, hadn't really thought about it, and I completely and utterly f***ed up. I just ruined it. I didn't know what I was doing. And so I got into some university that was halfway across the country. I'm like, I'm not doing that. Like, why am I? Oh, I've screwed this. So I canned it. I canned all uni and I took a year off and I was going to take this plan where I was, I'd started to, in high school to make money out of designing websites for people. And I came across a website for a new radio station that was launching in Sydney uh, called FBI and I said to them, hey, I can do graphic design. And they, um, and they basically taught me radio from scratch. So it was accidental. It was entirely accidental. And after a year of, they taught me the basics of radio. They taught me how to... Um, how to, how to construct something to get people's attention really fast. It's the best education I've got. After a year of that, I'm like, yeah, I'll go to uni. And I, and I kind of, I'd gone on to a course and I'd, I'd signed on to this course and it was a, a media arts and production course at, at UTS. And then after three months of that, I got this phone call from SBS. I sat, chatted to this producer for three hours about everything and nothing. The next day, David and Margaret announced they were leaving SBS to go to the ABC. I ran into this producer again, randomly, and she's like, oh, you should totally send in an application video. I'm like, for what? They're like, oh, they're recasting the movie show. I'm like, the first thought in the back of my head was, that is a terrible idea. No one will watch that show without David and Margaret. And, um, and after that, I, I, I deferred uni and I never went back. And I, the moral of this story is um, you can come up with a plan. Plans are good. Know what you like. More importantly, know what you don't like. Because I actually find asking, asking anybody at the age of 17, 18, 19, 20, 30, uh, what they want to do in life is kind of pointless most of the time. I think what's better is to work out absolutely what you don't want to do. If you can start using a process of elimination to rule out the things that you don't want to do in life, the options for what you do want to do, what really excites you, will stand out in sharp relief. Um, and be flexible because it doesn't matter how many times you come up with a plan about what you want your life to be, it will change six, seven, eight thousand times. <laughs> This is my experience. Whether it's anger, love or grief, you can always feel Spike Lee's passion for a subject rippling throughout his films. Now, sometimes it verges on browbeating, but when it works, it can be tremendously powerful. Mark, thanks so much. No worries. I have all kinds of terrible pearls of wisdom. I've just realised. Let's get them all out. Rail them all Let's do like an improv run, like in Parks and Rec or something. Um, no, I've run out of them. No, no, no. <laughs> no two, two's good. Two's, two's good. good, yeah. Hey, guys. If you enjoyed that video, Click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel or find more of our stuff at studentage.com.au.